Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And the single most requested video I've had for the last two weeks is kind of off topic. People have asked me, Jason, we want to hear your thoughts, a detailed analysis of this idea of the U.S. Space Force non-negotiable. Now some of you are going to say, Jason, what does that have to do with fitness? Well, it doesn't, but we can spin it into fitness because it is important to fitness. There's a fitness component to this. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. Now, the fiscal conservative in me looks at this and says, how are we going to pay for this? Our defense budget is really already kind of excessive. We need to be figuring out how to trim this down. How in the hell are we going to pay for this? We're going to go ahead and get rid of some of this welfare. We're we going to cut some other defense budget. We're we going to cut foreign aid. What are we going to do to pay for this? But the sci-fi nerd in me says, oh my God, space marines. Space marines. <laughs> As a matter of fact, now that we bring up that topic, two different guys I know in real life who did serve in the U.S. Marine Corps who are also sci-fi nerds like me, have already declared that they are enlisting. They're going to re-enlist into the Space Force the very first day it opens up. They're, they're at the front of the line, that they are ready to go. Now, of course, one of them, I know he needs a different line of work because uh, since getting out of the Marine Corps, uh, he lost his police job after wrecking three police cruisers in one year, totaling them. But, you know, what I might add there is that, hey, he knows how to shoot, and he can he can <laughs> wreck the shit out of police cars. So uh, just imagine what he could do to a xenomorph. I don't know, man. I think that might be our man right there. <laughs> Sorry, Mac. I had to call you out, bro. Uh, all right, guys. But space marines, space marines. You need to think about that. Now, there's a few problems with that that we need to resolve. First of all. Uh, number one, we start putting Marines into space. Now, I am a fitness enthusiast. I believe in heavy barbell work. And I believe that machines cannot, cannot replicate entirely the benefits of free weights and barbells. I don't believe that they can. Uh, pretty strong in my stance on that. My concern is, you know, how are we going to have them continue to lift weights while they are in space? All right, there's a lot of technology we're going to have to develop for this, right? you got to think about the effects of zero gravity on muscle atrophy and all this other stuff. Um, there's a lot of work we're going to have to do to create artificial gravity for any ships that we're putting our space marines up in. Just for health and fitness purposes. This is serious. And because normally the artificial gravity we get right now from these space stations and stuff in orbit have to do with them orbiting the planet. If you break outside of that orbit, we're going to need a whole new technology to deal with that. All right, that is a very valid concern when we are talking about this because I mean really we talk about the survival of the human race we are eventually going to need to colonize other worlds if we want to actually ensure that our species survives colonization out there will eventually be necessary I'm not saying it has to happen in our lifetimes but we are going to have to work towards that goal all right and anyone with a good knowledge of, of the way things work probably understands that already. That's kind of a given. All right, we will. We have finite resources on this planet. Our population has grown pretty large, and even if it didn't, we will eventually run out of certain things. All right, we are going to have to colonize other worlds. Plus, if there's ever a big event that basically makes our world inhabitable, destroys it, whatever, we're in a couple different places. We got a we got a chance of surviving in the long term. So, you know, that is a health and fitness topic. We're talking about the survival of the species. So, yeah, we are going to need some space marines out on the front lines. We're going to need them to clear out any worlds. You know, they could drop on certain worlds. They might have to clear out xenomorphs. They might need to clean out arachnids. I mean, you guys saw Starship Troopers. You've seen the Aliens movies. You know, in both cases, you had to have some space marines deal with this stuff. What about the forces of chaos out there? Right? They might be out there. That might be real. Warhammer 40k fans will understand. Serious possibility. We're going to need space marines out there. We're going to have to start this U.S. Space Force in order to deal with this. Right? They're going to have to be on the front lines. Now, another issue we're going to have to deal with in terms of technology and medical 
that I think is a very, very serious point, and it's not really a laughing matter. You might think this is funny, but I don't think it is. We're going to need a cure for space herpes, because that is one of the side effects of launching a bunch of Marines into space. In the event that we can encounter intelligent life, you know, I'm just calling it like it is. Don't get mad. Don't get mad, Marines. It's calling it like it is. You put a bunch of Marines around a bunch of exotic intelligent life and they start drinking. Before long, the whole platoon's come down with space herpes. We're going to need to find a cure for this. It's a serious business. Serious business. This needs to be addressed. Also, what are we going to do about space toilets? Right? Again, we got another zero gravity. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to have to work on, guys. This is going to take funding. This is not going to be cheap. And I think the final point, the final point as far as problems we need to resolve on that end, how are we going to have space marines when we don't have an emperor? Like, that doesn't work. We do not have a god emperor. We, right now, President Trump is the president. All right, Space marines and a president, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work with the lore, guys. We, we need a god emperor. Or else this is, this is not going to work, guys. I mean, what's going to inspire the marines up there, the space marines? They need a god emperor. They got a half. So we're going to have to change some things to make this happen. Now, all the sci-fi jokes and everything aside, uh, I have mixed feelings about all this. Let's be actually serious for, for a change. Uh, I have mixed feelings because here's what it comes down to. Do we need, when we start thinking about the problem of, of, of war on the international level, dealing with China or dealing with Russia, you know, hell, they're dealing with Saudi Arabia eventually. All these different countries, yeah, we're going to have to start thinking about weaponized space, all right? We're going to have to think about this. And you people need to think about the fact of what technologies we already have that aren't even disallowed as far as our space treaties. I mean, think about the rods of God, the tungsten kinetic bombs, no explosives required. Those things are absolutely, at least hypothetically, uh, devastating. I mean, we can technically launch those into up into space and satellites right now under the current... Uh, agreements we've all decided not to put certain types of weapons in space but you know here's the thing what happens as soon as one country violates that space is going to be a big deal the moon is going to be a big deal when we're talking about defense as far as international stuff goes number two you're going to talk about different cultures and ways of life we are going to need to colonize out there eventually. I mean, we have to be realistic. The, the long-term survival of the human race is going to require us to colonize, and whichever nations and cultures and ways of life successfully do so first, that is very possibly going to be the dominant way of life, ideology, whatever you want to call it, that is going to survive. So if you're talking about, again, survival of cultures, survival of ideologies, there is a, an actual space race and it's not a big deal now it could become a big deal in another 20 30 50 years uh, we're going to have to actually think about these things these are things we're going to have to think about as a society as a planet uh, we've got to think about this stuff um, because it's not just going to be survival of the human race it's going to be which which ways of life which cultures which ideologies are going to survive you know particularly we start going off world uh, things that we have to think about. But yeah, the survival of the species being a very high priority there. Now, the issue we run into though is again, resources, you know. Uh, when you start talking about building a space force, that's gonna take money and it's gonna take resources. We're gonna have to actually seriously think about that from the perspective of where are we gonna pull the resources to do this sort of stuff? Uh, do we really want this to be fully socialized or do we wanna get better rates by having it be more corporate, a capitalist type bidder system? I don't know, there's a, there's a lot to think about in regards to that, but we are gonna to have to think about how we manage our resources, how we manage our money. Where, where are we gonna get money to pay for something like this? Um, a lot of people say, well, why can't we do this to spend extra money to feed the homeless and the poor? Well, maybe we need to figure out a way to deal with the whole poor situation and the homeless situation outside of a welfare setting so that this doesn't even become an issue. Meaning we, we have major economic issues that we have to resolve 
that we really and truly have to resolve before we start pumping billions of dollars into a space force. All right, there are things that we do need to resolve down at the economic level in our country before we can we can do this. Uh, and I don't think we've done a very good job of managing that. We haven't done a very good job completely of eliminating poverty through the correct pathways. And I can tell you right now, welfare is not how you eliminate poverty. You eliminate poverty by creating better jobs, a better market, a better economy to pull people out of that. And basically you cut down to just the only people who, who are poor are people who really and truly are physically unable uh, to work or earn income, right? Or people who are too handicapped to do so. Then in which case that's, that's when you have real welfare. And I don't, I actually, I don't have a problem with my tax dollars taking care of someone who, who simply is not able to work due to medical issues. And I mean, has no ability whatsoever. Um, I, I don't have a problem with my tax dollars going to that. I really don't. Got a problem with my tax dollars going to someone who chooses not to work and cranks out three or four kids. That's, that's a problem. But you know, there's, there's a lot that we need to resolve at the economic level uh, to deal with this. And, and no, I don't believe the socialist system is the way to do that. I think that there's things that we need to do with it, the, the capitalist level, the way that we need to deal with the economy to eliminate poverty to a larger extent so that we can quit putting so much resources there. We're going to have to figure out ways to not spend so much tax dollars and resources on jails. We need to change, again, fundamental changes in society. Are there things that we need to resolve so that we quit squandering so much money putting people in prisons? Uh, we need to quit creating criminals. We need to deal with our economic and social issues in such a way that we bring the crime rate down and maybe get rid of some of the stupid laws we have that put people in jail for, for stupid stuff. A little more freedom might help there. But yeah, also we do need to eliminate entire elements within our society that even create the, the criminals that we have to where we're having to spend money on that. And, there, and I'm not suggesting one thing. There's probably seven or eight different things that we need to do to resolve that so that we can bring the cost down of this so that we have money for a space force. All right. Same thing, our defense budget. We, we have a grossly inflated defense budget in this country. We spend something like 50% of the entire world's defense budget. Literally, the United States defense budget is as high as the rest of the world combined. China, Russia, every little country added up. Their combined military spending together equals ours. Part of it is inefficiency in our government contracts, not auditing the Pentagon. All right, we're going to have to get our defense spending a little better, under, under better control. We're going to need to reevaluate the way we do a lot of that, how we spend our resources, uh, so that, again, we can afford something that might be critical for our long-term survival like a space force all right there's a lot of things that we need to resolve several different elements within our country that we really do truly need to resolve before we can afford something like this i think that we need to work towards that i think it's important uh, I, I do think we need a space force i really do but there's at least three other areas of our spending that we have major social and economic issues that we as a country have to resolve so that we can afford this. Uh, and so there's, there's my only problem with it. Are we going to fix these other problems first? And I think if we do that, then, then, you know, we can put that billions of dollars a year into this. Uh, but again, we need to come up with a way to find the money. Our country is broke. We're in debt. We overspend. That has to be fixed. And a lot of it's, again, due to major problems that we don't bother to resolve within our, within our society. Again, both social and economic. And, and they have to be resolved. And that's my take on it. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.